there is a complex series of events that a eukaryotic cell must go through to produce a messenger RNA. And at every step of the way, you can have some aspect of gene regulation. Chromatin remodeling, going from heterochromatin to euchromatin, involves a number of discrete chemical steps. And if you could control those steps, for example, control the acetylation or phosphorylation of histones, you could control whether genes are active or inactive in the vicinity of those histones. And that does occur. During development, previously heterochromatic DNA packed around silent genes might need to be opened up in order that genes that had not been expressed to that point are available for expression so that cells can differentiate. Then, of course, we have transcription. And we make a pre-messenger RNA. And then you saw that we have different kinds of transcript processing. If it's a ribosomal RNA, it undergoes a cleavage-based processing. And here we have pictured mRNA processing, which, of course, involves splicing, 5 prime end capping, and 3 prime end addition of a poly A tail. Those are discrete steps, any one of which, in theory at least, is subject to controls. Uh, molecules in the cell or in the nucleus that speed up addition of a tail, slow down addition of a tail, uh, increase the rate of, of capping, and so on. And capping, remember, is one of these processes that are thought to enable the exit of a mature message out of the nucleus and into the cytoplasm where it will be used. So if you could control that, you would control the amount of final protein product that this gene could make. You may remember the poly A tail has something to do with the number of times that a message is actually translated by ribosomes. So if you could make shorter tails at a given time for a messenger RNA, you will end up making fewer polypeptides during the translation process. These are all just nuclear events. And then, of course, the message has to exit the nuclear pores and get into the cytoplasm. That's a step in itself, which in theory could be regulated. And then once in the cytoplasm, the ribosomes have to bind. And we know, as I pointed out earlier, that uh, translation can, in fact, be regulated. Be aware that that's a point at which some controls over the final amount of protein produced can be exerted. Oh, there's translation. There's also mRNA degradation. Well, nothing lives forever. No molecules live forever. RNAs that are produced in eukaryotes have varying half-lives in the cell. There are some that are very long-lived, and others that are degraded within minutes of being produced and released into the cytoplasm. All evolved, of course, to make sure that the right amounts of proteins are produced, and no more and no less. Prokaryotes typically make short-lived messenger RNAs. So all of the proteins they need to make, in order to keep making them, the bacterium has to keep transcribing the genes. Only those genes that are regulated can be shut off so that their proteins are not made unless they're necessary. Eukaryotic cells, being specialized, have the luxury of shutting many genes off, in effect, permanently, and then regulating those genes which it must express in an exquisitely intricate fashion so that it produces the right amounts of proteins for the right amounts of time both for normal life and in response to environmental signals, meaning signals from the blood, the fluid around the cells, or even from external signals, and then, of course, timed signals, developmentally programmed signals. There we have other aspects, protein folding, transport, and activation. Remember that proteins have to assume their correct three-dimensional shape. And this is often facilitated by proteins called chaperone proteins. And those proteins then also are subject to, at least in theory, to regulation, all of which must be somehow correctly controlled to get you the final active protein. Lest I leave something important out, the proteins that are produced will also be degraded. And if you have ways of controlling the rate at which proteins are degraded, you have yet another way to control gene expression in the broadest sense of how much of a polypeptide is actually going to be present in a cell at any given moment. So in practice, it turns out where you have regulation, those genes that are regulated, most of them are actually regulated at the level of transcription at a simple switch that turns genes on, turns them off, or in some cases, it's like a dimmer switch. You can increase or decrease the level of transcription without actually shutting the gene on or off. But it's almost always related to how often transcription is initiated by RNA polymerase.